Hey friends, today we are going to make one of these Dollar Tree foam tape dispensers. So I get a lot of questions asked about my little um, container here and I've linked the video to Judy's uh, tutorial that I watch who is um, Red Princess Designs. Here on YouTube and I will link her uh, video down below as well I know there's a couple other ladies who's done this tutorial as well I just happen to follow hers we are gonna make one of these together today so that you can have it in your uh, crafty stash to put your Dollar Tree foam tape in so let's go ahead and get started you are gonna need your paper trimmer scoreboard uh, scissors, bone folder, um, two pieces of cardstock um, measuring whatever, eight and a half by 11 is fine. You can use that size or you can use a 12 by 12. Um, you're going to need some sort of adhesive, so double sided tape, wet glue, or your hot glue gun. And you're going to need a one inch circle punch. So let's go ahead and get started. I have already cut my two pieces of paper out. So for the front of your box, you are going to need a sheet of paper that measures five and a half by seven. So that is going to be for the front of your box. And then for the back of the box, you are going to need a sheet that measures seven by eight and a half. So go ahead and cut your two pieces of paper, five and a half by seven, and seven by eight and a half. And I'm just using Hobby Lobby cardstock for this. I want to use a solid cardstock and then decorate with pattern paper to make it a little sturdier. If you want to use like a hundred pound cardstock, you could as well. Or if you just want to use your scrapbook paper, you can do that as well. So let's start scoring. So for your front piece you are going to score on the seven inch side at one and a half and five and a half so let's grab our scoreboards and on that seven inch side we are going to score at one and a half and five and a half Then you are going to rotate your paper to the five and a half inch side. And on the five and a half inch side, you are going to score at one and a half. So five and a half inch side at one and a half. Now, if you are using a pattern paper, you need to be mindful. This score line at one and a half there. Um, is going to be the bottom of your box. So if you had pattern paper that was going this way, you would want to make sure that your pattern paper was going from the right to the left to score so that you would have your pattern paper going correctly. So we have one and a half and five and a half on our seven inch side and one and a half on our five and a half inch side for our front piece. So we can set this one aside and let's work on scoring our back piece. So on our back piece, at the seven inch side, we are gonna score at one and a half and five and a half. So seven inch side, one and a half and five and a half and rotate to your eight and a half inch side and at your eight and a half inch side we are going to score at one and a half three sorry for my funky three 
and seven. So one and a half, three, and seven. Now again, if this is going to be pattern paper, then your one and a half and your three inch score line is the top of your box. This is what's going to fall down here. This is going to be your flap. And then this part here, your score line at the seven inch side is going to be the bottom of your box. So just be mindful of how you have your pattern paper in here. All right, so we are done with our scoreboard. We can go ahead and set this aside. And let's go ahead and fold and burnish on all of our score lines. All right, so we're gonna start with our front piece here. So you're gonna have your piece here. You're gonna have your um, three large um, pieces. So two rectangles, your square, you're gonna have two squares and a long rectangle here. So what you're gonna wanna do on your front piece is you are going to want to remove these two squares. We're going to cut those off. We don't need them. So let's go ahead and remove those and I'm going to slightly um, miter my corners very slightly on these making sure to cut away my score line. That is just preference for me to cut away the score line. And I'm talking ever so slightly um, miter those corners. And that is all we're going to do for our front piece. And we are done with that. So you're going to end up with a piece that looks like that. So we're going to set this aside. And let's pull over our back piece. So this part here, this is what's going to fold down and make your flap. And this at the bottom with the single score line is what's going to um, create your box. So we're going to put our two score lines here at the top and our single at the bottom. And then what we're going to do is these bottom two squares, we are just going to cut up on our score line. So we're going to leave those squares intact. Don't cut them away. And then I like to miter ever so slightly on the tab part. And then I'll do a fold test here to see if I need to do any more mitering. And I do need to do a little bit on this box or this tab, so I'm going to miter that ever so slightly to make it flush with my box. All right, so then the bottom, you're gonna have a long rectangle and these two little tabs. At the top here, you're gonna see you have four squares and two rectangles. We are going to cut away these four squares. We do not need these four squares. So you're gonna cut those away and I like to use my bigger scissors for this and you're gonna to wanna to cut down that score line all the way to this part here. So cut both squares out, remove them fully. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm making sense, guys. And do the same for the other side. And then you are left with something like this. So you've got your box is starting to form shape. And then I like to take my corner rounder I like to take my corner rounder with the quarter inch side and I'm going to round my top flap here on both sides. 
I like that look. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can leave it squared. But I like to go ahead and corner around this. And I will leave everything that I can linked down below for you guys. I absolutely love my corner rounder and use it in so many products and so many projects. So now we have what looks like this. So here is our back piece and here is our front piece. Now we need to go ahead and punch our hole for our tape to come through. And that is when you're gonna need that one inch circle punch. So starting with your front piece, you are going to punch your circle on this right flap. So I just like to turn it over like this. So here it is, left, right, bottom, and I'm just gonna turn it around for me to punch it. And then you're gonna punch it down just a little bit. Now I'm confusing myself. Okay, here we go. So we are going to try to center that and then go down from that top just a little bit. And then punch. And you will have something like that. And so that is on our front piece. And on your back piece, your hole is going to be on the left side. So what I like to do is I like to take and line this piece up. And use a pencil and trace where I need to punch. And then I'll take my punch and line it up the best that I can, because it won't be perfect, on that and punch. And so we will have our little hole punched out for our tape to come through. So if you like to mat before you put together, you can go ahead and mat the larger square. Um, you can also mat um, the inside of the larger square. I would just mat this one because you're not really gonna see this one. I chose not to mat mine because it's closed for the most part. I'm not gonna waste my pretty pattern paper um, for the inside. So I'm not going to mat it. <clears throat> but for the sides here, you wanna wait to put your box together before you mat. So let's talk about pattern paper. You are going to need pattern paper for the front and the back. You are going to need a piece that measures three and three fourths by three and three fourths. You're gonna need two of those or three if you wanna mat the middle, the inside. So three and three fourths by three and three fourths and it gives you a little bit of a border. Then you are going to need a piece that measures one and three eighths for the side, one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. So you are going to need two for the side, and then if you want to have um, a top and a bottom here that are different, this, the flap that's different, you'll need another two pieces of different paper. And then I also added a little piece here, which is optional. So you will need a total of four pieces of one and three eighths by three and seven eighths paper, um, whatever patterns you choose and then two pieces of three and three fourths by three and three fourths. So let's go ahead and cut my pattern paper. So I am going to be using the digital collection that I printed off at home. And this is on like um, 
100 pound cardstock. So it's really going to help me um, make my box more sturdy. So we're going to do three and three fourths. by three and three fourths. And we're gonna do two of those. So we have our front and back pieces. And for the flap, I need to decide what pattern i think i'm going to use the pink for my flaps so then i need to cut three and seven eighths which is right there before you have you meet your four so we're going to do that and then we are going to cut i'll turn it over then we're going to cut one and three eighths, which is right before your, it's between your quarter and your half. And I'm hoping I will, this is not going to work. Let's see. Oh, that the pink is not going to work. I would have to make it a little bit shorter. So let me measure here. Um, I might have to do three and three fourths for the top. Okay. So for my flaps, I'm going to have to do three and three fourths because that's what size my paper is. Um, of course, you can make your flaps pattern paper any size you want but I want to use up my scrap paper here. And then one and three eighths. There we go. And then I'll have my flaps and the pink paper. And then for my side flaps, I'm gonna do this pretty blue paper and I want it to be like this. So we're going to do three and three fours. All right, so three and three, I'm sorry, three and seven eighths tall by one and three eighths wide. We're going to need two of those. And we have cut all of our pattern paper. So let's go ahead and assemble our box now. So I like to go ahead and assemble my bottom box by adding glue on my flaps here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of double-sided tape, and then a little bit of hot glue. So I'm adding a little bit of extra adhesive because I want this box to last. So let's go ahead and Add some glue to this flap. And this flap, and then we'll have the back of our box together. Uh, one other thing to point out, because I'm going to line my side with pattern paper, I'm going to go ahead and take my piece of pattern paper that's going to go on the side. And 
line that up where I want it to go and do the same technique. I'm just going to use my pencil to trace a circle. So I can use my circle as a guide to where to punch using my paper punch. And then I keep the little pattern circles. And then if you have any pencil lines, just go in and erase them. That just helps me to make sure that I am punching this out right. I notice this is over a little bit. So hopefully this piece will work out for me. So next we're going to go ahead and attach. We're going to put glue on our sides. So sides and bottom and add this to our box. So I like to start with the bottom of my box first. I'm going to add a little bit of my double-sided tape on my flaps. And I like to make my box where these flaps are facing the back. So you have a nice smooth edge here and those flaps are facing back here. I think that just gives it a cleaner look. Let's add a little bit of hot glue. And add this to our box. All right, and so our box is coming together. Now we need to put down our flaps. I'm going to do one flap at a time just so I have more room to work. Um, if you feel safer about this, use your wet glue and that'll give you some time to maneuver and move things around. And I'm just going to fold this back, lining up those top pieces. We're gonna be covering this up with pattern paper as well. But as you can see, the back of our box is here at the back and not at the front, so it gives it that cleaner look. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue underneath that area right there. Careful not to burn myself. All right, and now we are going to repeat the process with our other side. And then we will have a box all put together, ready to decorate with our pattern paper, add our adhesive um, closure to this. And then you'll be ready to send this out to Happy Mail or have this on your desk. I want to get a little bit of glue up here. Again, just going to try to match up that, as you can see, I got a little bit off on my box. Let me get this part definitely down nice and snug. I got a little hangover here, so I will just do a little trimming with that. I'm going to put my bone folder in here, make sure that glue is sticking nicely. And then let me trim this up really quick. So now we have our box all put together. So let's go ahead and decorate it. I'm gonna start off with this piece because I wanna make sure that it is going to get lined up properly. I feel like I yeah, I did not line that up 100% as you can see. 
So I may cut another piece of this. Um, this is not lined up properly either. And that would be, as you can see, where I, it was overhanging. And I will fix that up better. So I'm going to add another piece in here. Make a mark. And let's try this again. There we go. That is better. It's not perfect because this isn't lined up perfectly, but you could take your X-Acto knife in there if you wanted to clean that up. But I'm going to go ahead and cut me another piece for the side, but I will do that off camera. So let's go ahead and lay down our paper and I'm going to use just my wet glue for this. All right, so let's go ahead and lay down our flaps. Now remember, we have one of our flaps is corner rounded um, with our corner rounder. So we need to repeat that same thing with our little piece here. So let's go ahead and add our flat pieces down. All right, so there is our flat pieces done. And now let's do our sides. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. Now we have our patterns all the way around our box. So we are done with our wet glue for now. Need to clean that up. Let's go ahead and grab a um, piece of to close. You could do you could do a snap. You could do a magnet. I'm gonna do our little um, adhesive here. So we're gonna use that to close it up. And that's what keeps your box closed when you have your tape in there. So let's use these guys. And I like to put them together. Add a little bit of glue. going to roughly guess about the middle here and add that down. And then I'm going to add a little bit more glue to this side. And then we are going to close up our box. Add a little pressure to where your dot needs to be. And then we just leave that be for a minute to let it kind of dry and adhere. And now all you need to do is decorate it. So I added a little fabric bow that I made, some pom-pom trim, and this little scrap cluster and some jimmies on this. And then I didn't decorate my sides or my back. So we're going to decorate this using the carousel collection, of course. So let me show you. You don't want to use something that's going to interfere with you opening and closing your box. So you want to have something that's small that can sit underneath that. 
or if you're going to have something like this, you need to have it where it doesn't interfere with your closure and it sits underneath. I'm going to decorate this off camera because I don't want the recipient to see this, but I think what I'm going to do is add this here and add some thickers with the recipient's name. And then I want to add a bow. I think that bow's a little big. I do have my black and white bows. I could add one of these here. I could add one of those. So I, I feel like these are just a little bit big. Maybe if they didn't have the tail. Let's see, if I took the tail off and just added a bow. You know what, I think I might do that. I think I might take the tail off and add that bow onto there and then add my, the recipient's name here as well. So I think that's how I'm gonna decorate them. So thank you so much for stopping by, checking out this really long tutorial video. I know it was kind of a hot mess um, and it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but I think that's kind of, crafting that everything turns out 100% perfect. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I appreciate you. 